What's going on, everybody? It's your friend Will. We're back. It's a memory lapse. And uh, we got some quests this morning. We got some cold brew. It's a throwback coffee and quest video. So we got a couple options this morning. I kind of wanted to play the blue-white gift deck, but I've been playing a lot of gift decks. And uh, I can tell that people... Well, I mean, I don't know if people enjoy that they win, that they're good, or... Or maybe that they get tired of seeing like the same kind of the script for the deck is the same pretty much every game, right? You just get your gift into play and hope you grind it out. We got pretty flexible quests today. So I was thinking we could either play this new deck, which is uh from someone who like nine owed day one of the GP over the weekend. And it's a take on a Nexus of Fate to Fairy deck with search, but instead of playing a bunch of fogs and stuff. It plays like just <clears throat> like extra ramp. It has gifts and three springs and hour of promise, which is also doubles as its win condition. Then it plays like seal away and settle and fumigate and three commits, which is kind of cool. So I kind of want to give this a run because this is exactly the type of deck I like. Uh, and I also have another Nexus of Fate deck that I've been working on kind of myself. And I'm not sure where to go with it, but it kind of mashing together. Uh, inspiring statuary with a bunch of the planeswalkers. Um, we have Karns in here also, right? Yeah, Karn, Tezzeret, Tezzeret, and Nexus of Fate, and an Omniscience. Like, I think this deck needs a little more work, though, to try to figure out what the mix of artifacts should be to support it. Um, like, I don't know if Psy is right, because we don't have a lot of the zero-cost artifacts. But this is kind of cool when it gets going. Like, if you just play Omni and you get, like, a <laughs> draw two Tezzeret and just start, you can just chain through next to Fate. So you're kind of playing the draw two Tezzeret instead of the Teferi and the untap and power out the Omni off of Inspiring Statuary. But I think, you know, for the purpose of this, and if you guys if you guys are interested in that artifact deck and you have some suggestions on, on cards I should put in it, like, please post and let me know. Because I, I do want to play with it more. It seems kind of cool. But let's just give this ramp deck a try. Uh, let's take some extra turns. That's always fun. Oh my god, this thing is so... Did it pick the right deck? It didn't. There we go. I also updated the fog list from the one that Efro uh, made the top four of the GP with. It's pretty similar. I think the only difference between the list that I was running and the list that he played is he put in two main decks out of the wreckage, which seems pretty good. And uh, did a split of one Karn, one Nissa instead of two Karn. And then his sideboard was just a little... didn't have as many creatures in the sideboard. He just had one as a hall and that's it. So this hand we have... on the play we have Spring into Hour of Promise. The hour of promise is going to be short on desert unless we draw something, but let's keep it. <coughs> awesome to draw a blue source here and get searched down. Nope. It's okay. So depending, we may wait on this hour of promise if they're not putting a lot of pressure on us. Oh, I don't know. It's pretty good to go from 5 to 7. Alright, so let's just go get a blue source. I haven't drawn a land. I did play a couple games with this deck, and even though it plays 26, I was finding I was getting stuck on 4 a lot. So I wanted to play with it some more and chalk up some wins with it. Doomfall. Nope. Oh. They have a lot of justifiably good targets in this hand, but I'm guessing they'll take the settle? It'll be interesting to see what they take. They just take the Nexus, they don't want us. We got four more of those, so... They choose not to spend their... 
All right, so we get to gift up the island and play search here. Looks like kind of like we drew a land. <coughs> One thing I like in this list is this card. I mean, this card, if this was in standard when I was playing a lot of Magic back in, like, the Ravnica Time Spiral era, like, this card I would have just had in every deck without question. This card is so cool. Uh, let's take that. I think we just want an hour of promise here. <clears throat> and grab two deserts so our next one is good. So we're still above 20. So they are playing Minister Inquiries. So I don't, they could just be playing this because it generates two energy. They're doing something with energy here. I don't think that they're playing a gate strategy. So this turn we can hold up settle, and if they make a small attack, uh, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's graveyard that. Yeah, so let's just hold everything up and we can decide between mind and settle. They know about the settle, so we'll see. Oh, they're attacking with the siphoner. I mean, maybe this is okay. We just take three. We'd rather play our mind here. They get one energy, which they can't do very much with. I mean, they're, they're likely their second play is going to be something that makes energy. Whoa. That's pretty good against my deck. I think we can let this resolve for now. So we still want to play Mind and we can commit it before they get to activate it. Our promise is pretty good. <coughs> yeah, so we need to commit this wand away. Cannot let them like start time warping us. Let's go get a desert in our Arch of Araska, I think. Arch and scavenging grounds. Get some tokens. Oh, this is like a graphical issue. It's showing. Oh, never mind. I thought that was spring to mind again.
this is gonna be this is pretty funny if they get to activate this, which they have a shot at activating it next turn. Oh wait, they oh they drew two from their siphoner. Yeah, that's how they got it back. Alright, Teferi is a good one. So. Blue, blue, white. Maybe I should have minus on the wand. I think we're. You know what? If they want to spend four to activate the wand, let's let them. Let's gamble. Oh, no, we drew commit. Sick. So let's seal away the siphoner so they can't take an extra draw. Oh. That's fine. Not sure why they would do that. Alright, and we have Teferi protection with the settle here. Even if they like doomfall us again or do something, then the Teferi can take three. We just want to stay in play. We have almost enough mana with the Teferi on tap, or do we have enough? If we Played memory, two, three, four, five, six. Untap, yeah, we have enough to memory and hope to draw into a nexus with the untap. So even though this is not that threatening, I do want to settle to shuffle this chaos wand when they take lands out. That's appealing to me. Because I feel like this weirdo card is like the only way we might be able to lose. And since we're probably going to memory next turn anyways, we might as well get the card out of our hand. Although it does, I guess the counter argument is it gives them more land in play from when we memory so they can do more. This also accelerates our win by a couple turns of ulting this fairy. Uh, I want to know what they're doing. I mean, if they're actually found something cool to do with energy, because I, I kind of felt like looking at the energy cards. Well, one, the way the energy is written on the card, it's impossible to filter in, in your collection right now for energy, because there's no way to type that character. Uh, let's transform. We want to draw our nexus. We want to plus the fairy. Uh, we want to use this. Take another settle. Take another turn. Move into our end step. Activate. So now we more or less should have them locked. We're looking at 10 cards a turn. And there's our win. Put this into play. I'm always
always paranoid about setting the stop there. Oh shoot, I meant to click the gift. Damn, we're gonna brick here, huh? No, I guess we haven't bricked yet. We can always hit with the ferry. Land might be good enough. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Probably could have played a gift or something there. Wow. We saw a lot of cards that were not it. <laughs> I guess they did, to be fair. They did snag one Nexus. I guess this is worth doing to make them use up all their mana, right? a different one. So again, they know about the settle the wreckage. Oh, but there's an attack into it anyways, huh? Just in case, I don't want them getting like an up... If, if they ever get another turn, I don't want them being able to drain. Oh, there's no scoop to that cell. They knew I had it. Well, I, don't, I don't know why they... Uh, decided to scoop to it there. Ooh. Oh, I didn't build the sideboard for this deck. That's probably why it's not taking me to sideboard. I didn't build the sideboard because it was like the way that this player decided to si do the sideboard was instead of going the traditional route of like, oh, like we'll put in some negates and some Jason defeats and, you know, some, some random techie stuff. Uh, they just put 15, or no, 14 cats in the sideboard. So it's like... Regal Caracol, the f the three drop green cat that you can tap to make two tokens, the four drop M19 cat that when it attacks makes tokens, and they just were like decide that they want to have a transformational sideboard, which I think is cool. Except the problem is I'd have to use up pretty much all the remaining rare wild cards that I have to fill out the sideboard. Can't believe that we went like end of turn search for no nexus untap search plus to ferry untap and end of turn search again so we saw 12 cards off search plus two draws and didn't find a nexus <laughs> no three left in the deck it's a little unreal it didn't didn't matter but it was a little unreal. 
So I'm guessing our opponent here is just bringing in even more disruption, and, and they could have weird things like uh, like the cranial extraction, whatever the, the version of cranial extraction is called right now. Lost Legacy. They could have a bunch of weird stuff that they could be bringing in here. This is like a new feature I never noticed before right here. They added this like shadow. Hmm. Similar to last time. Look at this. You can see the shadow of you, the planeswalker here. Yep, that's predicted. More disruption. I wonder what they'll take here. I would, if I was them, I'd probably take search. Possibly should have left with planes there in case I drew like a glacial fortress as my blue source. Scattered groves, okay. Not in a rush to seal away this minister. So now what do they take away? A Teferi, a Search. Maybe they take away Seal Away? I don't know. Our hand is pretty bad right now, so they're... Uh, took away the Hour of Promise. That makes sense. Alright, that's a nice one to rip. Islands. So next time we can play Search and Seal Away. Jeez, yeah, so they just fully loaded up. Now do they take search? They kind of have to take Teferi, because if I rip land, they get Teferi plus and have seal away. That's pretty bad for them. This little squire is getting it done. I did not rip land. Ripping land would have been GG there, probably. <coughs> but this will help us ensure that we get there next turn. And I think for sure we just slam to fairy and plus it with the seal away. Come on, untapped land on top, let's go. I wonder if they have negate here. That would be pretty brutal. Wow. Nope, okay, good. Let's just work this engine. Well, they traded like one for one with us a lot with these Doomfall effects. But Teferi is going to dig us out of that hole pretty quick. And then this turn, next turn, we get to play Shepet Dunes, Hour of Promise for two more deserts, and get two zombies. I know about this seal away. <laughs> so they get to hit the ferry for three. That's fine. I don't think we 
care about eh, you know maybe we do care about this a little bit it does have some value against their scarab god that one we don't care for that much but Okay, so let's just get, I guess let's get these, so we draw the cycling ones, we want to cycle them at this point. Oh, they kept the fatal pushes in, so wait, what, <laughs> what did they take out to bring in all this extra hand disruption? That's what I want to know. So they could they could get the Teferi off the board here if they have another removal spell. Yeah, they do. Wow, they kept in the fatal pushes. That's good for us. We have a lot of time still. So there's one Teferi there. We can just put that straight into the graveyard. I think that you could argue to play one of those mines main phase and tr but there's oh but th there's not much that I could have drawn that I could have played for three like I could have drawn into like a another spring or a gift, but I think this way, if they try to duress me or something, they're hitting a blank and they can just mine at the end of their turn. Alright, Teferi is a good one. take a point here to cycle that. They don't have any creatures in the graveyard yet. So we would be looking to take eight here. I think in order to make sure that we flip the Iskanta next turn, I'm going to play the second search, nuke one of them. I wonder if they'll play around Settle here. No, they're not. Interesting. They're playing around it by leaving their 1-2 back. I guess I could mind here and hit, try to hit a seal away to prevent a little bit of damage.
I wonder if they do have a counter that they're just sitting on for like a Teferi or a Nexus turn. It's getting a little scary over here. Alright, we want that. Oh. Oh, I see what they're doing. Okay, I definitely want that, so... Ooh, that's interesting. That tells me that maybe they don't have a counter. But let's lead. I think we're going to find out. If we leave it to Fairy here, we'll find out really quick if they have a counter. That was some weird glitch. It's like making me do that. Yeah. All right. So let's just play this right. Nexus. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have enough to gift up something. Tap two cycle. All right, so we're missing here. Let's just take a backup fumigate rather than risk it. Let's fumigate. And play our promise. <coughs> take the non-cycling lands because we can always cycle the ones that we draw. Thin our deck down. Alright, so we get an activation on their turn. 19 cards left. All four Nexus is still in the deck. Can't imagine we're going to miss. Yeah, I guess our opponent doesn't imagine we're going to miss either. Oh, wow. so that, those games took a while, damn. We didn't get even close to our quests, but unfortunately, there's only so much time this morning. 
I was hoping to get a couple more done. I should try to put some kind of sideboard together for this. The deck is the deck is cool. It feels a little <coughs> a little bit clunkier than the fog version. I can see the advantages, like I can see the upside to this. Like one of the things I always felt about the fog version was uh like personally as a player I feel safer just being able to play something like Settle or Fumigate. I mean, maybe this deck just needs a 27th land. It just feels like both those games we kind of got stuck uh, and had to take turns off like because we just missed missed land drops and ended up having to spray or gift in order to be able to progress, which is just weird considering we're playing 26. I could see shaving an hour of promise. I don't think you, maybe you don't need the full four, although it is a very good card and I do like it. Maybe you could shave one of these or shave a commit. Three commits might be too many. You got a 27th land in here. I really hate missing these land drops. I'm also not sure that... It's always felt... The, both those games have felt like we missed blue early. But again, small sample size. Only two hands that we looked at. Two starting hands. There might be like a couple small tweaks you can make to this. But yeah, the sideboard is supposed to be all cats. If we search cat... The sideboard is supposed to be like four of this guy, which I have. Four of this guy, which so I need one more. And four of this guy, I'd need two more. So I'd have to burn three wild cards right there just to get the core 12 cats. And I think there's even. Do I have the tab open still? Oh, let's see. Oh, and two Shalai. So you protect your cats. And, you know, a miser's negate. So I guess I could craft... I, could, I mean, I guess the wipe is probably coming next month, so I could craft it, but then this is going to lock me out of probably crafting too much uh, before then. But yeah, that would be... So that, I guess the idea is... You're siding out, like your settles, your fumigates. I don't know if you're siding. I think you keep in the nexus of fate, but just I don't know. I don't know. That's interesting. I should I, I should take a look at his match, because he did get a feature match on day two when he was like nine zero and one playing against someone who was ten and zero. Unfortunately, he drew that one also. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he did get a feature match where he sideboard sideboarded into the cat plan. It'd be interesting to see like kind of what he kept in. Um, because so I assume you sided in the full 14. But anyways, that's the deck this morning. Hope you enjoyed. Sorry if you're tired of time walk decks, but these just feel like the coolest decks like this and get in uh, God Pro's gift. So coolest and most winningest. But yeah, until next time, everyone, thank you for watching. And we'll be back with more soon.